Today, I bought the Lego Star Wars Death Star Final Duel. Hello everyone, it is I, Republic Studs, and today I got uh, the Death Star Final Duel set 75291, ages 9 and up, comes with 5 minifigures, came out back in 2020 with 775 pieces retailing for $100, now on sale at Walmart and various retailers for around $89. And this set is going to be retiring at the end of this year. And I wanted to take a look at it and give you my full thoughts and if you should buy it or not. And yeah, so before we get into all of that, I'm going to ask you all to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It'll help me out a metric ton. I would really, really appreciate it. Uh, we're gunning for 25,000 subscribers, and obviously I would love, love, love the support. Uh, but yeah, so we are going to get right on into it. Let's go. So here is a look at the box art. Now you will notice this is actually takes place. They put the entire dual set within the actual setting. You'll notice in the background you'll see the little window, uh, which is all neat. You'll see the floor panels. Obviously, you get a great little battle going on here. It looks fantastic. You get all the details, the statue, the Vader logo at the top, which all looks fantastic. Now I do want to take a look at the back. Now here it is, they tell you all the different play features, which is very cool. A thing that is interesting that I didn't think about until recently is that a lot of the sets that were made for the Skywalker Saga will be retiring before the game even comes out, which is kind of bananas. Um, but yeah, so now I think it is a good time to take out the instructions. But first, I would like to take a look at the side box art, which they again nailed with this one. Again, I'm happy with the way they're doing these. Now, let's take a look at the instruction book. So here is the instructions booklet. It is very tall. Obviously, you do get the QR code in the bottom. Uh, same type of box art. Uh, you'll notice it gives you the bag instructions. You know, you move through the instruction booklet. And then you move to the back. You get your parts list. And then you go look at every 2020 set, pretty much. I actually own every one now, except for Dio, which is not on here. And these two uh, first order ships up here. They're, you know, sequel ships. And then you move over here, and you get a look at the minifigs, as well as this guy, you know, this says, use the LEGO game code, and you will get Darth Sidious. So, I guess you'll get that for everyone watching this once the game is out. Comment below if you're around watching this when the game is out. I'm really curious to say. Uh, but I think it is time to move into the minifigs. Now, first up, we have the only good guy in this set. This is Luke Skywalker. Uh, one of the more disappointing figures. He doesn't come with leg printing. Obviously, I believe this is the same one we got in the new Imperial Shuttle. Comes with his green lightsaber, which is obviously dandy. He comes with his, you know, uh, whatchamacallit, his gauntlets, his little... Uh, you know, arresting bands, I, I don't know, uh, but but yeah, so then you do get a you know, decent print all around, I don't even think, okay, he does, he does come with a back face print, a little smile, uh, I think that looks great, uh, now let's move into the next one, so next up we have Darth Vader, now an interesting thing with this type of set, uh, the dual Death Star dual sets, uh, is in the last one we got, uh, we got our first look at this brand new helmet mold, which, you know, is still kind of new to me, even though it did come out, like, you know, five, six years ago now, uh, but it's still new to me, and now the new thing that was added this time around was he got his first arm printing, which looks great, obviously you do get the beautiful, beautiful arm printing on this figure, it is pretty commonplace now in sets, uh, and then you also did get his new leg printing, which is fantastic, uh, and you know, again, we brought back the old helmet, that is again very nostalgic for me, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on, uh, we get him with his smiley face, and we turn around and you do get some of the cracks on the back of his skull, and I'll lift, even lift this up, and you do get some back printing, which you don't get with some other figures uh, in this wave, or in this set, which I'll talk about a little later, uh, but either way, Vader is obviously a very great figure, uh, uh, let's move into the next ones. So here we have the Imperial Red Royal Guards. Obviously, these are two identical figures. I am really glad they were included here. Um, so first off, you know, nothing too crazy about them in terms of detail. They have been the same for almost the last 20 years, minor, minus a few minor changes in the cloths and, you know, the arms. So they are a dark maroon on the arms. The red is still all bright. It is plain black. You get this nice helmet mold, obviously a classic helmet mold. No back printing, uh, which is mildly disappointing, I will say. Uh, and again, you get two of those guys. You'd put them in cool positions. They're mainly good to, you know, you know, be defensive people, uh, and then a great way position that I recommend you hold them in, uh, I don't know if, it, if this is the right arm or not, but just have them hold it backwards, because that is kind of the most professional way it feels like to display them, as opposed to this, because this is more using it like a lightsaber, which it is not, it's like a force pike or something cool, uh, now let's take a look at the next one. 
Next up, we have the Senate. This is Emperor Palpatine, obviously a classic character. He comes with his two uh, lightning electric bolts. Uh, you know, these have been around in LEGO Star Wars for a while. He also does come with his golden lightsaber, which I didn't even think he had. I thought it, like, got flown out the window. I didn't know he had a lightsaber after Revenge of the Sith. Maybe he did. He probably did. Um, but, yeah, so then he is pretty basic. He comes with his regular print. You know, we've gotten this one in the past. Uh, he does come with a cape. Uh, he has no back printing too, uh, which is mildly disappointing. Again, uh, he comes this is his first appearance with this new hood, so he's technically exclusive to this set. Uh, I believe the only exclusive one still, because again, that hood uh, is a little, a little special. Uh, but yeah, so it, it's I'm having a hard time, you know, focusing here. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, Palpatine is great. Uh, he has a little bit of a smile on there, and then we'll twist the head around, and he will put on his angry eyes, like Mr. Potato Head or something. Uh, and then, you know, that's all great, and I'm really having a hard time focusing. Okay, there he is. There is Emperor Palpatine. Now, it is time to take a look at the build. So here is the set first in its most compact state, and there are so many ways to display it. Uh, but if you want a just compact type build to put on uh, your shelf, but you know it's too you know wide or whatever, this is the way you're probably going to do it. Now my preferred way of doing it is first you have to uh, pull these two sides apart. Uh, you know they are pinned in, and we'll show that in a second. And then you could just pull this out, and then you can obviously you know pull out these pieces here. And I really like the way that looks. I think even if you tuck it in a little bit. Uh, and that just looks fan friggin tastic. Now I kind of want to move front up and then I'm going to move from one side to the other. Uh, so let's start with the entrance. So here obviously is the first door. Uh, now I'd like to start off. This is very different from the previous versions of Emperor Palpatine's throne room. You do get this little gold ball display piece. I think these are like Sith artifacts or just, you know, general political artifacts. You do get these little you know, ski pieces that are used as like almost like doorbells or something. And then you do get this little green army man, dude. I don't know what he's supposed to represent. And then you get this great little entrance. Now, I do want to show the doors in a second, but I first want to prop up the Red Royal Guard. So here they are, obviously very epic. Uh, a, th a small note is this is not really lore accurate. This is a Creative Liberty Lego took piece. This is supposed to be really an elevator, uh, and this does not look like an elevator room. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, we are going to be opening up this door, which all you you have to do is pull out this little side piece and you could pull them out in unison uh, you know it's a little harder and then you open it right up and there you have Emperor Palpatine I really love the sliding features as you guys know uh, I am a big fan of those types of things and I think they nailed this obviously I think they did the other one great too uh, this one they just really reinforced it's structurally sound in there you don't have to worry about it like loosening up and pulling out it is in there now I want to take a look inside let's move forward a bit and take a look. So, here is the side door. This is obviously more accurate to what the elevator opening would have looked like. Uh, they did do a better version, I believe, in the Snook's throne room where they actually did have an elevator, uh, but that wasn't well received, so maybe that's why they did this. Uh, but you do get these two stickers of the Imperial hallway look, and then you also do get this platform here. Now, this platform is one you could slide in or out, mainly for displayability reasons. You get more room to walk up the stairs, uh, which is why that is there, and that is all neat and dandy. Now, it is a little difficult to get access to stairs and get a great angle, uh, so I'm going to try my best and show you a bit how they look. So, I have recreated the scene where Luke is, you know, whamming on Darth Vader uh, and basically taking him out. We'll have Palpatine going back going, good, 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 very good. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, and, and yeah, so that is pretty cool. And then there's this little feature you can use right here. You will notice this pin, and I will try to zoom in on that as best I can. And with this pin, you can basically, you know, press it, and like so, the chair stairs go flying. I meant chair, I said stairs. And then you get these two little stair pieces. Obviously, the character gets to go flying, and there's still room to walk on, and then it's very easy to just put those back. It certainly stands out a little bit because they have a lot more extra studs than, say, the other sides. Now, let's move up to the top and see Emperor Palpatine's little throne area. So here is the throne room. You do get these little, uh, I, don't, I don't know what they are, but they're these nice little accessories. Uh, they were a little fun and a little repetitive to build, uh, but yeah. So however, we do get these brand new pieces. These were not in the previous version of this set. Uh, you do get like, a little diagram for the Death Star with some arabesque, and then you also get a little control panel over there. And then you get Palpatine's chair, which I want to take a closer look at. So you notice we obviously do get a sticker there, uh, which is all neat. And in order to actually use this properly, you could technically take off his cape 
And like so, you have Emperor Palpatine. I wish they gave you... I honestly think I might prefer the older hood. And then also a fun little feature that they have here. Uh, they actually have you spin this around and you could have a great little space uh, for his lightsaber. And if you want to use Luke's blade, say, like you take off his blade because, you know, that's not going to be needed. And you could even put Vader's there if you want it deactivated for whatever reason. And then you could simply spin it around like so. And then you do get two clips. Uh, so one of these could be used for, say, the little handcuffs that Vader had Luke in. Uh, you know, that's a pretty good area to put those just, you know, if you need something to clip. And he did have, uh, you know, Luke's lightsaber on his side. So I guess you would put it there. Or you could also clip it here. So if you don't want it to fall off. And, you know, you just get a cool look. I guess you could clip his lightning there technically. That would just look a little weird. But I do love the look of this with the window in the background. And then if you ever want to throw Emperor Palpatine out the window, you could just, you know... Ah, I don't know. He got sucked into space. How sad. Okay, I want to look under here. Now this build actually looks somewhat like an underground submarine of sorts and then all you have to do to move this is take this piece off and then like so you will notice you get some clips and I want to bring this forward and this was one of the things I found fascinating because in the previous build you got a little feature that you'd fling up Luke's lightsaber that he could grab uh, from behind Palpatine. They got rid of that in this build uh, which I thought they included but it was kind of disappointing. I didn't realize that until I built this and I'm like hey they didn't include that. It was a bit of a finicky thing uh, but you do get areas to hold his uh, hood as well as the lightning obviously which is great and I really do appreciate and want to hook the hood on. And there you have a great look at that. You'd have these guys in kind of like holding Palpatine's cloak and he could walk up or Luke could walk up and be like, okay, now I am Darth Sidious or, or Darth Luke Skywalker or something. Uh, that, that is kind of a cool looking thing. And again, you can play, put, place the top area back on top. You just simply push it back in and you still do get this area and it is nice and it can be used and you could have Vader and Luke actually fight under here uh, which is pretty great and you also will notice you do get this little crate piece like this thing as well as all of those blue uh, shiny guys uh, and again I don't know what the blue like little orby things are uh, now I want to take a look at this side actually so let's do that so this is where Luke basically has to jump up to escape Vader, so Vader is like, bum bum bum, I'm here, where are you, son? I just want to talk. Uh, and Luke's like, no. So you just simply press on this button right in the corner here, and you will fly him over, and you will fly him up onto this platform. Obviously, that will never, ever work. Uh, it will never get up on the platform. Uh, but, but it symbolizes, it's a fun play feature to fly him around, like with these stairs. Uh, and, and let's put Vader down. Now, obviously, we do have Luke up here, which looks fine and dandy, but the problem is, like, Emperor Palpatine, you'd be like, yo, Vader, he's right there, and Vader's like, oh, and then Vader will go and cut this little piece right here, so there's this little thing, it's connected to studs, which is way better of a feature than the last one, and then it will just knock it over, and it'll knock it in, and Luke will fall under. Now, I will do that again. And we're just going to knock it in. Luke falls down and he has to go fight Vader or whatever. Obviously, you know, that was a pretty fun feature in the last one. I'm glad they improved upon it here. And I think it works really well. I do like the way this little piece just kind of hangs in there. Uh, and I think they did a good job with that. And again, there are these clips here. If you want to duel them as lightsaber clips, feel free. Also, a fun little thing not many people know. There are these little cans here, uh, which is kind of nice, and I really appreciate LEGO doing. There also are these little things just to smooth out the side. I, just, I like the little greebling in details. That is just a really nice addition they didn't have to do, uh, but they did, so I wanted to, you know, share appreciation. Now, before we recreate one of my favorite scenes in a second, I do want to take a look over here at this thing, uh, this little, you know, chasm. Uh, so you do get some detailing on the outside of the, like, you know, Imperial things we saw up front. I don't know what to call them, like they're the hallway lights is what I like to call them actually. And then you do get the TIE Fighter type, you know, window, uh, which looks great. And you know, it falls out right and nice and dandy. Now let's take a look at the chasm. So there is the chasm. There are stickers down there to, you know, resemble it, but it's kind of difficult to, you know, get the message across. But now I would like to recreate the scene you have all been waiting for. And we just have Vader come up and he's getting electric. Uh, and then he just goes, yeet! And then Palpatine goes down uh yeah obviously i have vader's hand because he did lose his hand at this point in time and then luke comes up and hugs but oh wait vader's dead now okay vader's in there too and then luke's sad because his dad died so you know and then we could actually you know use the guards failed and they're gonna get killed by 
Snoke or Clone Palpatine, they're all in there. Uh, you can actually fit every single character in there, and you still have room for more. So if you want to massacre anyone else, you can. And if you want to take them out, all you have to do, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is just wiggle it until people start coming out. Uh, Palpatine is difficult because he has the lightning in. You're not really supposed to put him in with lightning. Uh, there's Vader. He came out before Palpatine, which is kind of concerning. And then, you know, usually this is less difficult. Uh, but everyone out. It was a little bit of a process, but we did it. And that's the fun little thing about this. You could basically recreate how J.J. Abrams thought episode 6 went, so that way he could have made episode 9 where Palpatine just, just, just falls out. Speaking of episode 9, this set can also technically duel as an episode 9 set as there was a duel in the Emperor Palpatine's chamber, which is obviously very cool. Uh, and, you know, I guess you could throw Rey down here to find her, you know, memory hold version of Evil Ray, and then here, which, which everyone knew was going to be a, you know, vision and whatever, and then Kylo Ren can steal, I guess, a Wayfinder from over here somewhere, or actually, you know, that would be actually really cool. Honestly, that would have been insane if they put the little Wayfinder slash Ray like, versus room where she, like, you know, went after this Evil Ray. That would have been fantastic. I would have loved that. That would have been great. So, here is the set, obviously. It is great, and I am going to get in my full thoughts right now and try to find a place to put this thing. So, this is a pretty great set. Now, before I get into my full thoughts on this set, I want to tell a small story about a young seven-year-old boy, seven or eight years old. Uh, now, he saw this set back in 2014, uh, a similar Death Star final duel. And he saw it and he absolutely loved it. And he wanted it so bad. He remembers watching reviews from The Brick Show. They said it is the best Lego Star Wars set ever. It came with a brand new Darth Vader helmet that you could like, it was two pieces. And it was the, just the coolest thing ever. And it had so many play features. And this kid loved to play with play features. And what he did for that set was, his parents said, okay, we are going to get you the set on the condition that you do swim team for seven weeks. And that little kid was me. And I swam for seven whole weeks to get the 2014 Death Star Final Duel, which is why it's still one of my favorite LEGO Star Wars sets. I worked tirelessly. I hated that swim team. That was the worst. I did it like every afternoon. I was left breathless. It was just the worst. Uh, I, I did not have a good time. But my gosh, when I got that LEGO Star Wars set, Ooh, it was all worth it. And it's so crazy now thinking I can pretty much get any Lego set I want because I've been able to have great success with my YouTube uh, sphere and anything I want. And, and I don't usually always get stuff even if I do want it because, you know, I want to be you know financially responsible. But I saw this one and I wanted to feel a little nostalgic because, you know, that was a great Lego set. And I was curious to see the new one. This was one of the very few 2020 sets I have not gotten. Uh, I'm missing, like, th four uh, major ones. Uh, Dio is the only one I'm missing from that summer wave. And I want to take a look at it. So first off, you know, minifigures obviously were great. Not, I wouldn't get this set for the minifigures. It does come with, you know, this originally came with like a new Darth Vader print. But, you know, this is not a set exactly for minifigures. It is a set for play. If you love playing with your little sets, this is fantastic. It's all right for display. Like, people will get the memo. Uh, just if you want to get a display set, I don't know if I'd choose this as the one. This is a fantastic little play set. You get so... So many cool features to throw Palpatine down the little you know, shaft. You get his chair. You get an area to hold all his stuff. You get the little things to fling Luke and the you know chairs that would fling. And you get the front entrance and it's all Technic connected. And it is just so great. That's just why I really love this set. And while I still obviously am going to be, you know, prefer for nostalgic reasons to choose the previous one, this is a great set to get. And it's really fun. I I'd strongly recommend buying it. It's certainly better, you know, objectively than the the previous one it is also i believe 30 dollars more than the other one uh, and sadly the other one also is not gone up in value incredibly much it is not entirely valuable because especially the set uh, you know it probably it probably would have gone up more but i do remember it being extremely popular i remember the brick show saying this has the best lego star wars set uh value and i tend to agree i mean this was around a hundred dollars and i laid sets like the bad batch shuttle uh, you know, in the same general category, uh, you know, you're getting six figures or five figures in that, you're getting five figures in this. Uh, so it is just something that considering, you know, if you want to make a good comparison, that's probably a decent one to make. But yeah, so with that said, I would give this set a solid 10 out of 10. It is perfect. Every minifigure that is in here should be in here. Uh, the only thing, you know, maybe is they could have given Luke some better leg printing because he does not have any leg printing. Uh, but other than that, Lego, you did a great job with this one. R really, 
nail it hands down fantastic set i really really enjoy it but with that said i will see you all in the next one remember to peace out and stay awesome